Joining me now from the UK, Andrew Smith, Senior Lecturer in Contemporary History and Politics at the University of Chichester. Hello, thank you very much indeed for your time. We were just hearing there from our reporter Claire Pacalant, the French National Assembly, that the President Emmanuel Macron wanted a, a good balance between the left and right and centre. He's also always been very keen to include people from what we call here in France civil society, so non-professional politicians. Has he managed to do that this time around? I think he does have uh, a good balance. I think he's achieved quite a good balance. Um, that was obviously, as you say, really what was driving him. I think with uh, with Christophe Castaner, um, he has really uh, the biggest symbol of balance um, that he's bringing forward. Uh, of course, uh, we needed really somebody from the left to help support him. He has, of course, Philippe at the heart of government. I wanted to bring somebody really to replace Colomb with a similar status. Uh, Castaner, of course, is very much a Macroniste, somebody who's you know, absolutely committed to the man, uh, and obviously right at the heart of his uh, Republic en Marche uh, uh, party as well. Um, but of course, before that was 30 years in the Socialists. So definitely coming from the left of the party, although hopefully for him a, a more kind of um, a, a more loyal voice. Uh, of course, with him, Laurent Nunez as well has given a sense of the uh, the, the technical expertise um, that goes with that interior ministry. Um, of course, if Castaner is now France's top cop, um, who's been travelling around the country already meeting police today, um, you've got someone like Nunez beside him, um, who has that background in the counter-terror police, who you know has an already developed uh, track record that he can speak to. Um, I think otherwise, apart from security as well, like you say, there's a, there's a, a lot of changes elsewhere, although maybe not as many changes as the, the, the run-up to this, uh, this reshuffle would suggest. Um, he's balanced things well. He's got a, a good thing. He's trying to combat this idea of the, kind of the government of the cities, the government of the rich, by trying to bring people closer to power from elsewhere. Um, of course, he's got uh, he's brought in uh, youth. He's brought in uh, uh, under uh, Blanquet, who's now the kind of uh, the youngest minister, I think, who um, uh, supersedes Le Cornu, who was the youngest minister before him. Um, of course, if you go back to the the fourth and third republics, it was uh, François Mitterrand was previously the the youngest minister, I think, in the the fourth, and Jean Zay in uh, in the in the third. Jean Zay is in the pantheon, and uh, François Mitterrand, of course, a former president. So it bodes well for. Uh, for those young ministers uh, within Macron's cabinet, I think. But Christophe Castaner, does he really have what it takes to do this job? I mean, interior minister, it's a very big post for someone who doesn't really have much government experience. It's very true. Um, I think that's why he's had to balance it with Nunes. Um, and people are saying that Nunes is really the kind of the power behind the throne, as it were. That actually Castaner is the kind of the loyal face that's going to be the one that directs things towards him. But actually the key aspect there will be the relationship between him and Nunes, who, of course, as we said, already has that background with security forces. For some people see it as a kind of um, uh, a kind of sop to the left, I think some people have talked about, you know, a way that people can see a sort of um, a little bit of softening under a kind of worry about a kind of rightwards drift under Macron's presidency. Presidency. So I think, you know, I think um, Castaner might be inexperienced perhaps within that brief, but he has around him the technical expertise, which will help him actually uh, to kind of uh, realise his post, you would hope. Um, there's been other criticism around the reshuffle I've seen. Um, people, of course, uh, criticising uh, some of the, uh, the the movement that's gone around um, the, the ecology post, of course, um, famously that Hulot left uh, very recently. Now, of course, François de Rougy, uh, maintains, you know, the Green maintains his post there, but he's actually been um, Emmanuel Vargon in the, the, as his uh, Secretary of State is perhaps a more controversial appointment as well. Um, now, if Nunez is the power behind the throne in the Interior Ministry, I imagine many people will be hoping that Vargon is not the, uh, the power behind the throne in ecology, uh, especially, you know, uh, Hulot resigned because of the, pres the presence of lobbyists in government. Um, and of course, famously, Vargon was the director of public affairs for Danone um, for many years as well. So actually, there's this kind of worry for many people. This is now not no longer the lobbyists skirting around the outside of parliament, but actually right there in cabinet. Um, so I think there's a bit of balance to be done. If we take those relationships between the ministers and their secretaries of state, then actually there's a lot of, um, a lot of interesting relationships going to be developing over the course of this ministry. Now, you mentioned Nicolas Hulot, uh, of course, the other big departure, Gérard Collomb. President Macron was forced into this reshuffle. This wasn't something he was uh, expecting to do. Do you think, though, that it might give him a boost? It might be a little bit early to tell, but his popularity rating is so low, around 30 per cent, that maybe this will help? Perhaps, um, perhaps it could help, or perhaps it's a dead cat bounce. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on this to work out. 
Um, of course, people like Castaner are already touring places where there has been local violence. He's uh, touring Villa, where, of course, there was um, a young person killed very recently. Um, I think those kind of responses to specific immediate crises will be what will come to define it. Rather than the reshuffle itself, I think it will be the actions of those in power. I think far more important will be the way that uh, Macron responds to things like the, the crisis in the Ode at the moment as well, and um, with those absolutely dreadful floods. I think really it's going to be those decisive crises and the new staff he's put in place. I think people will be talking about the reshuffle much less and much more about the actual kind of response to immediate crises that are actually forthcoming. Um, I think a week is a long time in politics, and it's going to be really old news pretty quick, uh, given how long it took to actually happen. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed, Andrew Smith, for your time and your analysis.